Welcome to the Wally Show After Castle, the things we did not get to during the course of the show today. Uh, I do apologize to you, Lady Rock. Um, you had asked me to get something for my anniversary, and I forgot for uh, socials. Um, oh, I was I was just in the classic moment. Classic Wally. I was in the moment and like not having a camera out when I was just you know uh, being present with my wife for our anniversary. Boo. So I know, I know, <laughs> lame, so lame. I know, I, I it is yeah, kind of bad. It is kind of bad. Uh, so. We're the reason we're talking about this is because it was my 31st anniversary yesterday, and we had said no presents because we're taking a, a trip, and we're like that's our gift this year, and we and we've always done presents, and well I've always done them, uh, and so been a I, party of one. Yeah, I got there and I, I I made it through. I didn't buy a gift all the way down to the day before, and then it just didn't feel right. I wasn't settled, so I bought a gift. And w- what was you great did that for was yourself then. Yeah, what was great though is as we're sitting there yesterday, we're walking around the house. I brought it in, I just set it on the side where she couldn't see it. Mm. And so then we uh, opened our cards because we always write each other cards and stuff. And so, like, that's really good. And I brought her flowers. I got Aww. her a dozen roses. Did you get her the balloon? I did she get wanted? her the balloon. Nice. Turns out that Mickey Mouse is making some money. $9 for that balloon. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I was shocked when I checked out. I knew I had to get it, so I didn't even look at the price. You get home today and she popped it. Yeah, <laughs> She's like, yeah. No. What? She would cry if it was pop. She me another? she loved that balloon. She was like, it just makes me so happy. Like I'm like, all right, man, I love it. Huh. That's great. So that was great. So I had had that stuff sitting there and gave it to her. She's like, oh, that's so sweet. And so then we were getting stuff ready for our dinner that we were gonna make. And um, she's at the sink, so she's got her back to me. And I just took the present and put it up by the flowers and stuff like that. And she turns around. And she's like, what is that? And I'm like, what? It's, it's, I don't know. It's not an anniversary present. It just happens to be a, a gift. Where did you get the paper? That's not paper we have upstairs because she knows everything. Uh, and I'm like, I bought it. And I wrapped it at work. And I brought it here. Not an anniversary gift. Just a gift. Just an I love you gift. You know. She's like, Ugh. I said, I, I didn't feel right about not having a gift. She's like, but now I don't feel right because I don't have a gift. Yeah, I'm like, it's, it's selfish of you. I'm like, it's not about that, sweetie. If, if, oh, yeah. no. Yes. No, rewind the tape Why? from yesterday's Aftercast. Yeah. And I believe your words were, it's a competition. And you want to hold this over her head. Look, she, okay. We, we had the rules set in place. Rules are made to be broken. And we all know that. <laughs> she had every opportunity to break the rules just as easily as I did. Her to? But she chose not to. Do you want her to? Yes. I, if she wanted to break the rules, I wouldn't be upset but at all. But if she got you something that was more expensive or nicer than the gift you had gotten her, mm-hmm. how would you have felt about that? That rarely happens. Uh, <laughs> so, no. Um, no, I like, and so I got it. So here's how I sidestepped it, though. Mm-hmm. I said, I understand. I, I, know, I know you're not mad because you love gifts. But uh, <laughs> like, like I said, I said, I understand, like, where it's like, oh, you got a gift I get and it feels weird. I said, this is a gift for both of us it's a it's a it's a couple's gift okay mm, smart yeah, and it really was. Uh, I had got her this Lego set because we built the Lego house together, the up house. And so while I was at Target getting the card, I saw this other Lego thing we had looked at and thought was really cool. And it's like it, it's like uh, books, uh, fairy tale books from Disney stuff. And it's just it's just it's a really cool piece that would look good where she's got all of her Disney stuff displayed. And so I bought it for her, and I said the reason I got this is because this is a gift that we'll continue to give as we work on it. Today together and because that's what we do I really enjoy that time with her and like so we'll build a little bit of it each day and we'll take a week to do something and it's time together and we talk and I we laugh that. and yeah I think it's really cool and so she was like oh that's so sweet oh bud she calls me bud that's good or babe <laughs> babe uh, and so like it, it, and so it went over uh, really well and it was it was really sweet and so, so you won I did win yeah <laughs> winning for the anniversary well um, done yeah, the uh, building of those things is is fun, and I did tell her, I did commit to her. I said, mm-hmm. I said, as much as it kills my soul, because you read and you look at the pictures more than I do, and I, I tend to put things on upside down. <laughs> I tend to hurry, <laughs> and then I have to See, deconstruct. That's your I you know, always hurry. I do. You're like the Alabama song. I'm in a hurry yeah. to get things done. I am. I'd rather like speed through it and then have to go back Why? and fix it. I Enjoy don't know. Enjoy it. I know. You do that with all your home projects. I do. And so I told her, I said, I said, I know in the past there's been times where I've been frustrated during this uh, momentarily, um, but <laughs> you're really good at this. Like you take the time to read the instructions and she actually is really good at it. Mm-hmm. And I said, I pledge to you on this build, Boy. I will... Uh, 
listen more, talk less, and mm-hmm. I will I will let you take the lead on these because mm. uh, normally you think Legos is kind of more the like guys grow up building Legos and playing with them, but they mm-hmm. really do have a bunch of stuff for girls now, which is really cool because um, I think Legos are amazing. Uh, but I and I'm I'm really serious. I'm like, you know what? You take the lead. You just tell me what you want to. Where I want to put that brick, click, 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 because it should be a thing of, that's fun, and and she's <laughs> actually really good at it. She's smarter than me in in uh, a lot of areas mm-hmm. that I wouldn't expect for her to be. She's good. She's a oh. good problem solver. Oh, okay. I was like, watch your words. Uh, no, 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 no. She's no. smart. A lot of things. I would think she'd be dumb at. Right. Yeah. That's what you get me. Um, I don't. <laughs> no. Like like when it comes to like like building things or whatever. There's a lot of times I'm going on a project and I I have a very focused approach to what I'm doing and she'll come out and go I don't know if that's right like maybe if you try it this way and it drives me nuts <laughs> but she's right probably 90% of the time Aww. like she's like so so I'm learning as I get older to go you know what she's she, she has great ideas like use them utilize her you know <laughs> you know what she's earned her keep she has here. it took a while you everyone has to do her. that with me and it took her 30 years so like 31 now uh, the ridiculousness all right well let's tear into some uh, stuff here I did not do this story on uh, the show for a reason um, but it is interesting uh, if you're into recycling and you make sure that you separate your items every week uh, and you put them in the right bins and you're like, I want to save the planet. You are going to love this because this is possibly the ultimate recycling. Uh, NASA is actually recycling urine in space <laughs> to make it drinking water. Oh, nice. Can that makes sense. you believe that? It does, it does make sense. That's like, disgusting. And can you imagine you the person it, that though. was charged with that job? They're like, Jenkins, we have a project for you. You're perfect for this. Why am I perfect for recycling urine? Uh, you know, like what made you uh, think of me when you thought of this project? But like somebody that had to be their job to scientifically go through all of the things. And what would we have to do to make this potable water again? Like I, it's it's fascinating potable. to me. Uh, mm-hmm. I think potable means drinkable um, and non-potable is non-drinkable. But is yes. it is it is it? Yeah, be, yeah, room or body temperature. Or oh no, you just treat it chilled? like water. You do. You would just chill it. It would become like normal water. What they do is, they, well, they said that they um, uh, have been able to recover ninety eight percent of the water that crews take into space with them uh, by recycling urine, yep. sweat, all oh, of that smart. stuff. They have dehumidifiers because mm-hmm. you sweat in space, and they work out and stuff, and it just floats up. So what do you do with it? It has to go somewhere. I mean, it's just staying there. It's just. It's like a um, what's that? machine, a perpetual motion machine. Like if it doesn't get expelled anywhere, it just stays there. Uh, CO2 turns into water vapor and stuff. And so what they do is they check. Uh, don't check me on that. I might be wrong. Uh, no, uh, no, I think it does. Don't this quote is me really on this. sciencey. We're getting real yeah. sciencey. And so what they do is they have these dehumidifiers, which pull that moisture out. And then for the urine stuff, uh, they have these amazing, they better be amazing filters uh, that basically recycle this. And they're looking at how they can recycle food and Air and water, and the whole idea behind this, Food? though. Yeah, I know. I don't want to even think uh, about don't, that. No, that's yeah. a different story. Yeah, I don't want to think about that. Yikes! Uh, the, ah, yeah. Don't eat the stop. popsicles. <laughs> that's not chocolate. <laughs> it's not lemon. <laughs> that's not. <laughs> um, so they. Uh, no, but the reason they're doing this though is so that they can explore longer. Like they yeah. have to be self-sustainable because, like, the closest. Uh, what do we got? Uh, 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 Mars is our closest planet to us. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, we've been having this dream of getting to Mars for how many years? But, wait, Mercury, Venus, my, my very something mother. <laughs> or, I think yeah, you're right. Yeah, it is. Okay, I just want to make sure. Um, but, like, they have to figure this out so that they can do th- th- a few things they need to figure out. Uh, like light speed, like traveling mm-hmm. faster, hibernation, putting people to sleep so that they don't age during that process, yeah. and then recycling of food and 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 because you can't you can't carry so much stuff, you have to have stuff that becomes self sustainable. But, but at some point, yes, if we're down to the you have to make urine into water, correct, to survive, right? Maybe humans just aren't meant to be there. That is a fair question for okay? now, but that's a fair question. But what happens is. As you do these advancements to dream about going to space, mm-hmm. think about what that 
that filtration system could do on Earth. They create this to, you know, take urine out. Think about what that could do for countries that struggle with water. How clean they could take the dirtiest, worst water that that's these true. countries have and make it drinkable. You know, like yeah. so. That's yeah, the, the advantage of, of I was, space. I was being selfish. Just that, don't care. You. I apologize. About the yeah. world. But no, but that is the advantage of, of, <laughs> of space exploration and really any exploration is that it's what comes of it that you get to use. Velcro was invented for uh, NASA in the what the 60s when they were doing space stuff. And so you use that every day in some way, shape, or form. Hypothetically. Yeah. You're in a situation. You're in a <laughs> yeah. And you have to drink purified urine. Okay. It is purified, you swear? <laughs> nope. Yeah. It's I mean, it's I what mean, are you gonna life do? or death. Uh, is it a life or death or is it just like, hey, you're just like no, thirsty? No, it's a choice. You went to space. Yeah. You cannot take a bottled water. Yeah. Can he put uh can he put his grape powder in? No. Yeah, I'd have to. Uh, no, I, that's where I'm like, uh, you know what? I don't want to be an astronaut anymore. <laughs> exactly. You know? so you yeah. Do it. yeah. That's yeah. for yeah. the people that really want it. Yeah, I mean, they have to, their bodies go through a whole lot of stuff, and they there's a lot more that goes into being an astronaut than you think. And so, like for me, I'm like that would probably be a point where I'm like, that's not worth. It. I mean, just using the restroom on a uh, in zero gravity. I, I I went to like space camp with my daughter, I and went it was to space camp. I know it does sound nerdy. <laughs> it was really cool, and I still have the dog tag from it. I got nice. a dog tag, and I still wear it to this day because uh, it was such a great memory with me and her. But they explained to you how you have to use the toilet, <laughs> and it. It, it has a camera that lines you up. Uh, what? Like, yes, there's a camera that because li- you're in floating in space, and so you sit down on it, and and it lines you up. It tells you when you're docked properly. No, it uh, does. Not. It does. Honest, truthful, and then you have these uh, seat belts basically that hold you on it while you use the restroom. Ew! Can yeah. you imagine how dirty that buckle is? Oh yeah, it- yeah. See, that's the thing, man. Like being an astronaut, not not easy, not for the faint of heart. Uh, and NASA insists that the crew is not drinking urine. They're drinking water that's been reclaimed, filtered, and cleaned. So it's cleaner than the drinking water we have on Earth. It's not in a, it's not in a plastic bottle, though. It's not Evian. You know? uh, it's not Evian. You know? uh-uh. So I just thought that was fascinating. Uh-uh. So. <sighs> what do you got, Rock? I find it it's disgusting. It's a great story. Yeah, I, I like that I, story. I, I love the, the stuff that we do. You know, stuff we don't have to do, but hearing about it, and mm-hmm. you know, maybe someday we're on Mars. Like, if you watch, like, the what's the Matt Damon movie? Martian. Like, the Martian. Yeah, that was Martian, good. That guy's just eating potatoes on Mars because they found out how to grow the potatoes right. on Mars. We want to get from... You know, like having to take all of our stuff there to to growing it there. Sustainability. So, That's how you do it. That's how you explore. Well, you got to pee about, in enough cups to get well, there. Think about exploration mm. just in general. Why do we have GPS? Amen. GPS is what helps us navigate this globe. And we all have it in our cars. But for a while, it was like military and industrial. And it was it was... It was used by all of these other things, and now you've got it on your phone, you know, because of exploration. There's always going to be the 100 years ago, we didn't think this was possible, and now it's normal. So for us now, you know, what's what's going to be super normal 100 years from now? That's when I grew up as now. a kid, like Dick Tracy was a cartoon, and Dick Tracy had a watch, and he would talk into his watch. <laughs> and then I see my wife texting my daughter like that. Haley, make sure you bring such and such over tonight, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, I, I thought it was so far-fetched back in the day, but not now. It's here. I, I, I do love technology. Uh, I hate learning it. <laughs> yeah, there, I'm that remind is you of that true. Yeah. when you're like, that stupid computer. Well, like we changed our, our automation system here in radio world, and uh, we had to go through a learning curve of the new system. And I absolutely love it. I love what it can do compared mm-hmm. to what our old system was. But yeah, there were definitely some frustrating days. Uh, and that's, that's the hard part with uh, adopting. And the older you get, the less likely you are to want to adopt new technology sure mm. you get comfortable and you mm-hmm. want things ju- you just want things to work like they did yesterday <laughs> like why does it have to change today yeah we have this weird coming rule. from someone who hasn't updated his phone since 2019 i know i still don't have my i probably have a little <laughs> red bubble by the update right now uh oh yeah i do right there There's and then one. you get mad when something isn't working right like update your phone i know i know i have to be better at that um but we have this weird thing Tomorrow. here where we'll work 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 for months on end and then we take vacation and so the studio kind of lies kind of dormant and then we come back and and things are broken digitally 
and I was talking to the engineer yesterday. I'm like, how do they break digitally? It's a series of mm-hmm. ones and O's. I get if something mechanical is rubbing against itself and it would eventually wear out. But how do digital things, when we're just not using them for a week, come back and they don't work? I don't understand it. Mm-hmm. And his explanation was uh, was great. I don't know either. Why don't you know? <laughs> You're an engineer. You should know these things. Oof. <laughs> Wow. Well, what do you got, Lady Rock? It seems that your your uh, tyrant rate, uh, rant yeah. uh, has led me to... Tyrant. <laughs> tyrant, yes. Uh, this uh, story. So, yesterday on our potty group, which if you're not part of the Facebook Wally Show potty group, you can join when you text the word potty, P-O-D-D-I-E, to 91979. That's a quick question. Mm-hmm. Uh, Because I don't spend much time on Facebook, but I was looking for a Facebook group the other day. How do you find that? Oh, to find a group? A Facebook group, yeah. Hmm. I was was looking for, like, uh, you know, uh, friends with troubled coworkers. (laughs) Uh, No, but, like, no, I was trying to find a... uh, Friends who need friends. Yes, I was trying to find a friend. (laughs) But, like, can you search Facebook groups, too? I think so. Okay, I couldn't find the one I was looking for. But we've made it easy for you, so text the word potty to 91979. Right, yeah. See, I wish this other company would do that. And so here's what I did. I asked our potties. I said, I have a question, and I'm sure you already have the answer, but I want you to give me a topic that Wally can rant about. Oh, yeah. Well, oh, you didn't even need a topic. You went off on your own and did one. But I have a story that even some potties were like, this is going to get him on a rant, including Diana. She said this. Uh, Ryan Seacrest has a new job. Mm-hmm. I love it. He is now the host of Wheel of Fortune. Mm. Mm. I could not be happier for that young, hardworking man. <laughs> like, that is such amazing. I need to look and see how much he makes. I don't mm. even... Well, Pat Sajak used to make $15 million, and you know they're going to pay him more. Uh, Ryan, or or does, is Ryan the guy that undercuts everybody because he wants 47 jobs? I think we've done this before, but what would you guess is Ryan Seacrest's... Net worth? Yes. Mm. Uh, pff, uh, he's got idle... Million. I'm going to go lower than that. I'm going to go 65 million. <laughs> Is it yeah, higher we're, than that? We're undershooting. 450 no! million. No, no, dollars. no, 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 no. <laughs> why, Lord, why? I just, wow. I think why did you not give me a chiseled jawline? <laughs> I could have done that. Six inches. Is that all that you had? Yes, to have? that's all I needed. I definitely got the better radio skills than he has. I mean, I he's don't not know. Even, he's you're, not, not, doing, you're not getting paid 450 million. But he's not. I mean, his radio is horrible. And that's not even where he's making his money from anymore. Like, oh my God. <laughs> Because he's gracious. going on the bigger and yes. better things. You know who's really upset about this? You should ask to rant is Vanna. Because you know they're not going to give her a raise. They'll give her a small little bump just to placate her and go, remember what you do. You hit buttons uh, for a <laughs> living. And so, like, but him, they're going to pay him a grip of cash to come in and be a sycophant uh, and just <laughs> an empty vase. You're an empty vase. If you could explain. Yes. If you could put into one word. Yes. Your feelings for. Ryan Seacrest. Yes. One word. One word. What would you say? Jealousy. Jealousy. (laughs) Absolutely. 100%. I would trade places with him in a heartbeat. (laughs) Professionally, not personally. You tell us, you'd be like, Oh yeah, professionally, not personally. Paycheck every single day. Hundred percent. A lot of money. Morals over my yeah family. Because you know he has so many. The reason he can do eighty-seven jobs, uh, it's not because he's like the hardest working person, but he has a bunch of people that help him do these things. He has people that take care of things for him, so he doesn't have to do them because he's so stinking important. Because he's got to go from the radio show over to idol taping, over to Wheel of Fortune. Now stop. Uh, just stop, sir. Please let someone else have a job. <laughs> I, I, like, I, why? I will say, I don't think that Ryan's going to have the same class and aura that no. you almost associate with something like Wheel of Fortune. I think that he'll a bring show, a new, no, better. See, but I don't. Class. I don't think that's good. I it think it's be similar better. to how we're sitting here being like, I don't want to learn a new technology. Right. I don't think that we should have to learn a new style or a new version of Wheel of Fortune because I just don't want it to be something that's modernized. Yeah. I want it to remain in that really cool era that Pat and all those other people who have kind of moved on slash passed away, yeah. like they kind of held all of our attention because they were just calm 
and old and I cool. Be- Ryan's very young and cool. I very rarely watched um, Wheel of Fortune, not Wheel of Fortune, uh, Price is Right after Bob Barker yeah. passed. Bob Barker. Yeah. Exactly. Like, like oh, Drew Carey, so it was good. different and I didn't I like it. It wasn't like better. It. It's mm-hmm. not better. Some of Ryan those guys Seacrest, were just so built. And I, and yeah. I think be, maybe it's because those shows were built on a foundation that was that were like was those guys right. like I, it's hard to go back to stuff like Wheel of Fortune or Jeopardy it's hard to go back to those because mm-hmm. in your mind you don't separate those shows from those guys right for me at least yeah and it'll be interesting to see like what he does to you notice they weren't talking to him about Jeopardy because <laughs> he ain't smart enough no <laughs> You know who would they probably didn't call me either. <laughs> yeah. Uh you know who would probably give you a run for your money on a rant about Ryan Seacrest is Brian Dunkelman. Oh, 100%. The no guy, people don't know that name. I know that name. The guy that was also hosting American Season Idol one. in 2002 oh. along with Ryan Seacrest, but yeah. Brian decided to step away for some reason. I forget mm, why. Because Ryan Seacrest, uh, I think, Pushed threatened him, out? him. Yes. Uh, threatened him. Oh, okay. He, okay. So, yeah, Dunkelman, they had two hosts of it because I don't think they knew what they were doing with it, and I think they wanted it to be funny and because Dun- Dunkelman was a comedian and then Seacrest was cheekbones, and so <laughs> they put them together and who, as it turns out, cheekbones are more valued by society than humor, apparently. Um, and so they uh, they had, I don't know if they had a falling out, but Dunkelman was bitter about it. Well, I'm, I Googled, why did Brian Dunkelman quit American yeah. Idol? It said, he stated his departure was due to the terrible way they treated the young contestants on the show, staging the fights between the judges and reshooting contestants with producer-provided glycerin tears in their eyes. He went on to say that leaving the show was was a mistake. Yeah, yeah, 100%. <laughs> it really was because now that is what reality TV is. Yeah. And 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 uh Secrets made a huge career mm-hmm. out of it. I mean, he's worth so much money now because of that. I wonder what Oh, let me look what Brian Dunkelman's net worth is. Uh mm-hmm. how much does a Twix bar cost? <laughs> <laughs> Bless him. Let's see. That poor guy. Brian Dunkelman. See, but I could see me being doing now? that. It's a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, I mean, and that, okay. Oh, Do you know what your net worth is, though? Your net worth is not just your money. Your net worth is your house, your car, your anything you own that has value is mm-hmm. part of your net worth. Oh, he's just a normal dude. Yeah, uh, like so, like so. That's a guy yes. that has a thousand dollars in his checking account and is uh, just hoping to make rent next week. You know, <laughs> oh. and then there's Ryan Seacrest. Yeah, uh, I uh, Ryan should throw him a bone like please ryan would you want him to throw you a bone yes really yeah i would take he he, he was like look dude like say i had worked with him and he was like i feel bad how the way things shook out here's here's a million bucks i'd be like all right thanks man and i I wouldn't have to talk to him but would you sing his praises i'd be like yeah he hooked me up he was a good guy <laughs> I don't know. No, you would. Yeah, because Dunkelman was principled. See, I I would have been the Dunkelman in that situation because mm-hmm. if there's something I'm very principled about, I will hurt myself to <laughs> make that stand. I completely, if you I will was die on that hill, absolutely. If I was completely offended by how they were doing it, I would have made a stand and been like, absolutely not. And I would have shot myself in the foot. Why, uh, oh. Twinkle Toes, <laughs> uh, Blue Eyes goes and makes <laughs> uh, you know a grip of cash. Okay. Yeah. Well, this was Wally's Ooh. rant about yeah. Ryan Seacrest yeah. being the host of Wheel of Fortune. Well, there's something else about Ryan Seacrest, too, because we were talking about before we started the aftercast. You're like, oh, but wait, hold on to that for the aftercast because I'm doing uh, Ryan Seacrest. Oh, that's right. What Beca- was it? Uh, well, it was she James Chapesky. Oh, because I said, yes. okay, so there's this guy something. on TikTok that Wally absolutely loves. His name is James Chapesky. Yeah. Am I saying that right? You are saying it right. Okay. Well, Wally is his. His biggest fan. Yes, and I, I'm not. I'm not immune to the fact that he is not a great musician. But I love <laughs> but his passion. Yeah, that's what you love about it. Right. So, anyways, I was like, he would make for a great host of some kind of TV Absolutely. show. If you have no idea who James Chapesky is, here's a little taste of it. Hello, TikTok. It's James Pesky here from J Music Records. J Music Records. He's like the best self promoter of anyone I've ever met in my life. Hello, hello, TikTok. Hello, TikTok. It's James Pesky here. James Pesky here from J Music Records. Hey, TikTok. Yeah, I was so inspired. I made that about him. Like, he, and he, so great. All of his songs have to do with murky water. Yeah. Or fairies. Fairy in the night. Like, <laughs> like, fairy like, in the night. Yeah, it's it's. I mean, it's such good stuff. It's not even. It, it's. 
Ooh. And people don't We're get there. it. Starts with ambiance. Betty always wants me to read the comments because there are people so that just don't get it. There's one of his videos where he had a smoke machine, and one of the comments was, uh, how much smoke would you like? Yes. Is the answer. <laughs> like, it's so great. Oh, Fairy in the Night. Take me away. I want to hear your song. She would take me in the this girl singing with him, her name is Nicole. Yeah. An ex, right? Yeah, well, we, we it never know. was. It was a never was. <laughs> it would, uh, he, a James, girl who never was. Yeah, James, that's yeah. the one that got away. And uh, lucky for her, probably saved her life. Out of uh, <laughs> every in the night. Take me uh, but I love when people get it and they... And they are positive about things with him and <laughs> yeah. stuff. And that, cause you always have the haters that are in there that don't yes. get it, but the people that go over the top, well, I love. And the comments yeah. where people are like, dude, do you give voice lessons? Yeah. And he says, and he, yeah, yeah, 50 yeah, bucks. He does. And they're like, dude, would you sing at my funeral? Yeah. And he's like, yeah, would you sing at my wedding? Yeah. So like, good. He believes Charges 50 in himself. Bucks for and it's so lessons. great. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I fully support it. Again, I just love how like happy and oblivious he is. Like he just uh, and people say, "Oh, he's in on it." No, he's not. No, no like no. he's so, he's just living out his dream. And yeah, and he just he thinks people loves what he does, and I, and I do. I think that he is the perfect example of why the internet can be a great place. Sure. Because he puts all of this effort and all of this work into something that he loves. That we get to just ironically, love, well, yeah, no, 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 no. That's you, true. you really love it. So, uh, I, yeah, I love, I love his vibe. You know, uh, <laughs> he loves his vibe. I do. He loves his energy. I do. You know, I mean, it's, it's just, like, come on, we're we're following. Are you trying to? Are you? We're following him. Yeah, we are. Come on now. We're trying to play something modern. No, I want something wanted, brand no, new. No, is there murky waters that you could press Ooh, murky into the, waters. Uh, into yes. the mic over there? Murky Waters was on How YouTube. How many followers does he have? Oh, that's something I've never looked at. Let me see. Like, we're we talking uh, 20,000, uh, 10,000? Only 22,000. Oh, not still enough. Still pretty good, though. People can't appreciate that's still him. still pretty good, though. James. Yeah. I, I was looking for just comments. Um, <laughs> oh, my favorite comment was, there's one song. It was it was from the end of um, his uh, movie, because he did a movie. Mm-hmm. Here, I'll go ahead and turn this Okay, let me let me get to the beginning. I have to get back to the beginning to make it work out. And it's great because there's like eight people that are all friends of his, yeah. and they're literally there's no choreography. They're just jumping up and down but the There's lyrics the that's the, the one yeah. where it's like if we if we get together yeah. the world can be as one yeah yeah it's so good <laughs> but like I, I love the, again the comments on this is somebody who doesn't get it is like this has to be a bible camp thing <laughs> And then there was someone that commented oh and said, I'm going to put these lyrics on, like, as a tattoo. Yes, yeah. So I hadn't good. cried in nine years. <laughs> then I heard this song. It's like, so good, man. Oh, it's oh, so good. No. I love when people get it, though. They're like, I miss Nicole. Yeah, we all miss Nicole, especially James. One mm. day, maybe those two kids will get back together Bless again. him. Uh, all right. Well, I think let's do some birthdays. All righty. We got one. All right. Let's do it. Olivia, she wants to wish her son Evan a happy birthday. She said, late submission. Sorry, son. But she got it in, Evan. So be she's, thankful. She still happy loves you. Happy belated birthday. Yay. He turned 14 yesterday. Nice. Uh, she said, we have been longtime potties listening to The Wally Show since he was five. Wow. No choice since it's no mom's choice. favorite. Nice. He also once shaved one of his eyebrows. <laughs> Well, that was a poor decision. Yeah, I get it. Choices. Uh, then Olivia has a question. She said, much of what we have in the world today does make life so much easier, but also makes it hard for some kids, teenagers, to mm. just be themselves. What do you wish uh, you were told when you were that age? But I would say, too, like, I think we've talked about this because we, we've talked about like what we would tell our younger right, selves. Right. And it's all about like... You know, don't be afraid to be yourself. But let's put in there, you know, there's now technology, there's smartphones, there's social media. I mean, you can't get away from some of those things. And some, a lot of kids, it's dealt, it, it's hurt their mental state, like with depression or anxiety or things like that. But let's say you're talking to a kid, not you, but a kid that's 
a kid like Evan, 14 mm-hmm. years old, what would you say to a 14 year old now with all of this this electronic stuff going mm. on? It's so hard because any advice doesn't land because you know that whole advice of like when you have uh people that are being mean to you and you're like if they're being mean to you they're not really your friends you know Mm -hmm. you don't need friends like that and when you're a kid all you want is friends you know right and you're willing to put up with garbage you know but it is yeah but it is true you know that's that's the Mm -hmm. problem i think i would say don't make big decisions based on high school friendships you know, Ooh. like, don't, don't, like, because there are kids, I mean, there are kids that get so uh, messed up by what other kids tell them and they take their lives and things like that, mm. like life altering decisions or just big decisions based on high school things. I'm going to go to college because this is the person I'm going to marry mm-hmm. and I'm going to go to the college they're going to, even mm-hmm. though I don't want to. It's like, it's like, no, you do you, you know, and, and it does all balance out. It does work out even when it feels like there's no way it's going to right and i would say too that when i was in high school that was my world mm-hmm. like, your friends right well yeah. it, well it was the only world i knew must you be know? nice having them <laughs> for gavin like, and me i did that and i did Let you know yeah i did i did school i did church but there was one girl at my church that was my age like that was the only friend outside of school that i had but if anything happened at school it was like, that is my world. Right. That is a big deal. But now as I've gotten older and years have passed since I've been in high school, it's like, that was just a, a blip. Yeah, it was mm-hmm. just a chapter. Yeah. And now it's not as big of a deal. Like all the things that were like, you know, this person doesn't like this person and this person dated that girl's boyfriend. Yeah. It's like, it doesn't matter. If there's the things scheme. you love, man, do it. And mm-hmm. like because and 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 and, and people are going to make fun of you for doing they things. They still do that when you grow yeah. up. <laughs> it do, it doesn't change, you know? And mm-hmm. so why why not do something that you love mm-hmm. because of some other in person's insecurity mm-hmm. and then you lose twice because then you stop doing the thing that you love doing and you become somebody that you're not. You know, I I I really do believe it's like and I know it's not just be yourself. Yeah. I'm, honestly, that is one of the best things you can do because at the end of the day, you can still look at yourself in the mirror and go, I didn't change for anybody. And I was me. And I love people that are passionate about James Chapesky is a great example. Yep. You know, that kid got beat up at school. <laughs> like there's no other way he wasn't picked on at school, you know, mm-hmm. um, but like he's happy and he's just doing him, you know, mm-hmm. and that's a good thing. Like That's a real good thing. Yeah. Gavin, you're closer to high school than we are. I know. You guys are taking all the like really good ones. <laughs> um, I was thinking more in the realm of like practical stuff too. Like I feel like if you can use more of your time in your teenage years to understand how to do certain things on your own versus like having a parent do them for right. you. And I'm, we're talking about the world of like you know taxes and right. you know learning how to do stuff around the house cuz i i never i never i never learned how to do certain things at my house like like I wish I used Gavin to. baked yesterday for the first time. I did. Yeah. Oh, I, did. I did. I'm pretty proud of that one. But they I think were just, good. There are more life skills that I feel like you can grapple onto so that you're more set to take on the world. Yeah. And I don't mm-hmm. think I, I, I give my parents like a ton of credit for a lot of the things that they did teach me. But like I didn't learn a whole lot of like tools related stuff or yeah. things like that. And that was just stuff that we we moved around a bunch. We didn't have stuff that we worked on. But like I didn't. I, I still I don't know if I could change a tire today. Yeah. So see I and and, and kind of too. I would say don't be different just to be different. That's the mistake mm. I made. Mm. I, if you're already different, great. Like and, mm-hmm. and 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 you're different than everybody else. You march to the beat of your own drum because you're doing what you love. That's awesome. I was different to be different. Like that's a mistake because then at, in essence that made me become something I wasn't either. Uh, you know because I and it led me to some bad things too. And so I did that because I was super counterculture. That's a thing I have to watch today. Still, mm-hmm. as a 54 year old man, there are times where I'm like, okay, am I fighting this thing at work or in personal life or whatever because I believe in it and I'm passionate about it or because I just want to be different. I don't want to be lumped in Mm -hmm. to the status quo. I fight that in Christian radio a lot. Like, you know, Mm -hmm. because I don't want to be seen like a lot of the other Mm -hmm. Christian radio people. Uh, And so like sometimes there might be something that's, oh yeah, we really should do more of that. Mm -hmm. And I might have a, 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 
aversion to it because I don't want to be mm-hmm. lumped into that. I want so to be your, counterculture. So your advice was like learn to be different? What learn, was it? No, be if you are different, be different, but uh-huh. don't like be different just to be different. Okay, that's what I was going to say. That's like, the I problem. Think I, I've seen a lot of kids. I see a lot of kids these days who just like lean so heavily into what they think is being like super unique and super right. weird. And I, it, I'm like, that does, it doesn't seem to really make you happy so much as just you identifying as being different makes I, you happy. It just I seems like my, it's not yeah. helpful. I watch my daughter, and you work with youth, so you see it too, but I watched my daughter try on multiple personalities mm-hmm. when she was <laughs> younger. And I'm just weird. I'm weird. I'm weird. You know, and it like you're trying it on and you're just becoming something that isn't you, you mm-hmm. know? And so you're leaning into that and it's not real. It's okay to be like other people too. Like, like I've 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 gotten to a point when a lot of times I think of my interests as being just like super normal. Like I'm just a a, a normal 27 year old white dude that loves sports, goes and plays golf, makes some food. Like I just I don't I don't sit around thinking I've got crazy unique right mm-hmm. attributes about like my hobbies and stuff like that. And I'm totally okay with that because I do love those things. I tried on stuff when I was younger, but now I just know what I love, and it's okay to have landed on stuff that's not you know otherworldly unique well the funny thing is everybody that thinks they're being unique and the people that are like i'm so counterculture myself included uh you end up doing the same things other people are doing mm-hmm. you know like i love i love all the people that are like I, i'm so different and then you're in this group of people that are all different like you like no you're not mm-hmm. you, everybody has we all have groups that we fall into you know well and i know we've said this before but everyone has their own battle with insecurity mm-hmm. oh, yeah. absolutely so, if you're feeling insecure, just know that there are a lot of people yep. just right beside you uh-huh. that are feeling just the same. And Some it's just of us people are just that better are better at pretending. Exactly. Yeah. Better at masking it, you know, because especially mm-hmm. in high school, everyone, with the exception of one or two kids, are insecure. And I, uh-huh. I would know, I would say everybody is. Oh, yeah. Everybody is insecure in some way, shape, or form, especially in that world. So yeah. don't buy into that, man. And again, yeah, you just do you. It, it works out. You do you, boo. You look at the Zuckerbergs of this world, you know, he went on to accomplish some great things. And now he's going to fist fight Elon Musk. I know. How many so, of us will have that on our resume? Yeah, who are we cheering for <laughs> Pretty here? awesome, right? Oh, I'm going, I'm going for Musk on this one. Yeah. <laughs> Teach the kid a lesson. Yeah. Uh, all right. I think that's going to do it for our aftercast, our advice, and all that good stuff. And as always, thanks for being a potty. Growing up in poverty has never been easy for children, but with the added challenges of the pandemic, conflict, and natural disasters, families around the world are facing an unprecedented food crisis. Unfortunately, those who are already hungry are now even more desperate. But by sponsoring a child through compassion, you can help provide life-sustaining essentials such as food and clean water. And with your compassionate support, that child can not only survive, but also flourish. You can find out how and choose a child to sponsor when you click on the compassion banner at wayfm.com.